Hello guys, gals, and empals, and welcome to the best introduction of a trans character that we've pretty much ever seen. with Umbrella Academy, like I do, then you'll have no doubt seen that there is some big changes coming with regards to Season 3. Of course, there's the fact that they've now moved into a parallel universe, or timeline almost, where they stopped themselves becoming Umbrella Academy, and now there's a Sparrow Academy? Like, what's going on here? Where's this gonna go? And Ben's alive? Wild. Aside from those massive news, there was also one more little bit of news from our real world which impacted the Umbrella Academy Season 3 itself. And that is that Elliot Page officially came out as trans and now uses he him pronouns. Which is, you know what? Good for him. Always good to hear that a trans person is comfortable being who they are and especially someone who's high profile and a celebrity and can bring a lot of attention and good stuff with regards to appearing as a trans person especially a trans man which there honestly isn't that much attention on trans men which is a really big shame and there should be more something that we can get to in Umbrella Academy as well and all of this led to the follow-on announcement by the Umbrella Academy that they were going to have Victor as they're now called come out as trans as well in season three to sort of accompany that change with regards to the actor. Now that's all good stuff, but ultimately this could still have gone either way. This could have been terrible, it could have been a nightmare, but upon actually watching the season, I've got to say that Umbrella Academy has successfully done it. They've done the best possible way to put a trans character in that I've ever seen, and it's so well put that it manages to hit every possible note you could want, and I want to, before we jump into the big discussion of exactly what's going on there, I want to just go through all the moments that we get with Victor in the later season, and how those, as a synopsis, will eventually tie into the points I want to make. Who's Victor? I am. It's who I've always been. Firstly, the actual first time this happens is in episode 2, when Victor finally comes out to their family and tells them about how this is who they are now, their name is Victor, refer to them as Victor, and all the people there at the time when they say it are cool with it. It's Klaus, it's Diego, they're normally people who don't really give a shit what other people do, and they just sort of roll with it, because hey, if this is what you're comfortable with, that's what you're comfortable with. And the coming to that realization occurs for Victor because he's thinking more about his time with Sissy in season two, when the character first came out as being not purely straight. And in that interaction, one of the things that he's thinking about is, of course, the way that Sissy encouraged him to be who they want to be, how they can become anything. And you don't even notice the box that you're in until someone comes. And so that sort of awakens something in him with regards to thinking about, hey, that is true, I, I can become anything. I, I, I have control over myself and my own fate and my own destiny, and in that regard, I shouldn't restrict myself anymore out of fear of what others might think or what others might do. And he's right. No one gives a shit about it, because why would they? This is, the, honestly, the most normal thing that's happened to them in about three seasons at this point, so that's cool. And... We also get another scene in episode 2 where he comes out to his sister Allison as well on the side and she is a lot more, compared to Klaus and Diego, a lot more specifically encouraging of that, a lot more openly loving of that. A thing that's built off of the fact that Allison and Victor have had a long-standing good relationship over most of the show. Thank you for trusting me with this. Your family, Victor. Okay? And there's nothing, nothing that would make me love you less. And she talked about how she's really happy that he was able to come out to her and that he was comfortable telling her that and all the stuff that you would hope to hear from a good family or what you would want to hear from a normal family member finding out something so personal about someone that they love. Reasonable stuff to expect. Now, I'm obviously not going to get into what happens with the rest of Allison in this season because it is 
weird and not good and honestly feels a little bit like a character assassination so we're not going to talk about it because it's got no real bearing on this but something to note from that is that even throughout that entire period of time no one ever uses Victor's transness against them. It's never used as a bludgeon or a weapon. It's accepted and they're focus is on other things, other attacks, other ways of getting at Victor, apart from the transness. Which is nice because far too often shows to introduce trans characters and then have other characters who don't like that character attack them with the transness, rather than attacking them with the things they actually want to go after them for. It's nice to see a show that goes, yeah they're trans and we're not going to make a big deal about it and we're not going to make this a major plot point. It's just there. But we'll get more into that later. Next we have episode 3, where after being kidnapped and then returned, Luther, the big hunky himbo of the group, is briefly corrected by Diego on Victor's actual name, and just sort of brings Luther up to speak with him what's happening there. Luther is confused, but he's not confused by the fact that it's Victor now. He's more confused in the level of, what's going on? Have I missed more stuff here? Like, is there more shit that I should be, you know, told about that... I missed out on when I was kidnapped and held hostage by the Sparrow Academy. It's Victor. What? Bonnie's Victor now. What else did I miss while I was kidnapped? Jesus, Luther, not everything is about you, alright? Luther is one of those kind of big sweetie guys, and this makes complete sense for his character. He says, should they make a big gesture about it, should they have like a big party or something to like welcome Victor into the Brotherhood? And Diego tells him in a moment that I think is really, really interesting to see that response that yeah it is a really big deal to victor but they should just roll with it because it's not necessarily a big deal for them to make like there are bigger things going on and more stuff to be interested in and if victor wants to make a whole deal about this coming out as trans they can do that that's on them it's not for them to decide and that immediately leads into this other cute little scene. There's a lot of cute little scenes between Victor and their siblings around the transness. They don't, like, dominate the episodes, but are just, like, there, and you go, oh, that's nice. And this one is with Luther complimenting Victor on his choice of haircut, saying that it really frames his face well. It's just a nice little compliment moment to really emphasize the fact that everyone is aware change has occurred, and they're recognizing it and accepting it, and moving on. I, uh, I really like the hair. The uh, number 10? Yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah, really frames your face. Thanks. Now we roll into episode 4, where another small important interaction occurs between Victor and Big spoilers here for a character that comes back into the season. This is obviously about Umbrella Academy Season 3. There's going to be spoilers for the entire season, kind of. So don't be surprised if that happens. But Victor and Harlan have a conversation about Harlan's mother, about Sissy. About the way that who Victor is now was defined by that relationship. Defined by Sissy both helping Victor to come out as who he is, and Victor also helping Sissy to sort of realise who she was and to move on from her terrible, shitty husband. It's all just a really nice character moment, a really interesting piece of development for Victor, for continuing this line of how important Sissy and Harlan were to Victor, to him becoming who he is. And Harlan also asks if he should call Victor Victor now too, which is of course how it is and is true and it's nice to see the characters ask that and to get confirmation on that from the trans person. Just a good moment. Your sister called you Victor. Is that what I should call you? I'd like that. And the final little moment I want to talk about here is in episode 8, jumping quite a bit here because the trans stuff really is permeated at like a low tier level but it doesn't ever rise to the point of it being a massive deal for any episode it's all just a lot of small moments which yet again i'm getting ahead of myself here we'll get to that in a little bit when we talk about the actual interesting kind of cool stuff that umbrella Kami does here but in episode eight luther asks victor to be his best man in another really super cute scene that just sort of showcases the siblings doing their best to sort of bring Victor into the family, to bring Victor back into this. A thing that has been consistent over the past, like, season and a half, where they sort of realised that Victor was 
heavily abused as a child and always felt left out and felt like they weren't didn't belong in the Umbrella Academy and they've been doing their best to try to be like hey no you are one of us you are part of this like you were raised in the same shitty environment the rest of us were we all hate our dad and that's really brought us together as siblings it's totally last minute and I mean the whole thing is last minute but I... what is it will you be my best man you don't have to do much you know you just have to stand next to me and make sure I don't Act like an idiot, you know. <laughs> I'd love to. And Victor also shows up at the bachelor party as well. Just another continuation of that whole embracement and inclusion of the character in the masculine events that are going on. It's just another sweet, good moment. And you know what? As trans people, we kind of deserve some of those at this point. It's kind of nice just to get some good moments for trans people in TV. I'll take them. So that is the synopsis of everything that happens in Umbrella Academy around Victor and the recognition of the trans stuff that happened between last season and this season. And you might have already picked up on some interesting notes there with regards to what Umbrella Academy is clearly doing right. And there are two major ones that I really want to focus on here. And the first one is the way that this trans stuff really does fit into the already there character development. It really does work into the character of Victor. Him being trans makes complete sense. It completely tracks with regards to the character figuring out who they are still and learning about himself in a way that really does evolve that point. I mean, it's really smart writing and it's really cleverly done because it just takes something that normally happens and occurs and honestly the way that they did it as well the way that they incorporated it definitely makes it feel like they either talked to Elliot Page specifically or that they've talked to a lot of trans people as well to get it right to get it right as to like oh, how do we have this happen but not have it become a major plot point how do we just have it happen in the background or in the sort of small character moments and through that we get it but we don't get it shoved in our face so strongly. We don't get it, like, crammed into the entire episode. It's just there. And that is the continuation of that comment about smart writing. Because it doesn't make people feel as if this was just sort of put in there for no reason, or it was put in there just as people trying to make stuff up as they were going along because things were changing out in the outside real world. And like, oh, we've got to do this, I guess, just uh, whatever, do it. It shows that the writers actually cared about this. And it makes me think that it's possible Elliot Page actually talked to the Umbrella Academy writers and directors before they came out. I imagine he might have actually had a conversation with them and said, hey, how do we incorporate this into the show? Can, can we do this in a way that doesn't interrupt your story, but also lets me actually be who I am through the character as well? You know, I always hated mirrors. I thought everybody felt so strange in their skin. I guess that's not true, right? What do you see now? Me. And if that's true, which I suspect that it is, that is a really important thing that has helped the character seem so real, seem so well done, and seem so appropriate that it would go this way. It's a real sign of actors, directors, and writers all coming together to properly make sure that a character develops in a way that isn't going to negatively impact the actor and isn't going to negatively impact the story they're already creating. Also shows another thing that's really important that I wish more directors and writers would take into account, and that is the fact that your fictional characters are fictional. You can change those to match different circumstances for the actors. Say if another actor came out as trans and their character they were playing is now a different gender and they said, hey, can we change that? I actually don't feel comfortable playing that anymore. You can change that. There's no reason that you can't. They're fictional. You, as the writers and directors, have complete creative control over that character. And if you just put in the briefest amount of effort and the briefest amount of time to actually exploring that and to making sure that it works into your pre-existing narrative, you 100% can do that well. Umbrella Academy is 
an example of them doing that. Of the fact that it is a failing on bad writers or bad directors that just maybe don't care when this isn't done well. That it is possible to have those changes and for it to not make a huge impact on the show or the audience. It can just be there going on for a character on the side, but there's a lot more important stuff happening, so it doesn't have to become the dominant narrative of an episode. It would have been weird for Umbrella Academy to do a whole trans episode just for Victor, because there's a lot more stuff going on, and it wouldn't make a lot of sense for the character to have that sort of episode. Having it just appear in little snippets every now and then throughout various episodes and with making sure that each of the siblings and the other characters get an interaction, get a chance to connect with Victor and to sort of bring them up to speed on that, that is far better writing. And it does help as well because it does help trans people see themselves in a way that is just there. The trans character of Victor is just there now. And the people around it accept it and are fine with it. It doesn't become a big deal. It doesn't become a big problem. It is something that is perfectly fine and reasonable. And honestly, there's a lot more stuff going on. There's the whole collapse of time and collapse of the universe and everything. This is, as Diego said, a big deal and good for Victor to finally realize about himself. But it's not on them to make a big deal about it. It's really up to Victor to choose how they want to explore that. And that is, I think, a beautiful way of doing that. And I think that the way the siblings all react to it, too, is also beautifully done. It's all done in such a way that they explore the varieties in which a family can lovingly embrace someone who is coming out with something that's very difficult and sometimes very hard to say to people that you're afraid of their opinions about it. They all have a slightly different way of reacting, whether it's the over-the-top, really into it, hey, let's go, of Luther, or the more sort of reserved reactions of Klaus and Diego and Five, or whether it's the loving continuation of Allison. All of them get their moments with it, and they get their moments in a short period, enough period of time that it doesn't feel like it takes up the whole episode. Uh, is that an issue for anyone? <laughs> no, I'm good with it. Yeah, me too. Cool. Truly happy for you, Victor. So that's all I wanted to talk about here with regards to the Umbrella Academy and the introduction of Victor. I hope that you learned something, and I'm honestly hoping that we can encourage, through this sort of inclusion, better and better trans representation within our shows and movies. Because if they can do it, anyone can do it. If this example can exist, then we can use that as a way to hopefully encourage other directors and writers to learn. And the best thing, honestly, for them to do is to just probably talk to a trans person. Talk to a bunch of them. Get their opinions on it. Get their ideas on it. Run it by them. Get the idea of what could be done and what's good and what's bad. And work through that. The same you do for any minority representation. You, you want to get the opinion of the minority on how it's done well. That's an obvious thing you would assume, but... A lot of shows don't even go that far. And this really does showcase how when you do that, and when you do that right, it just fits in so perfectly with the narrative you've already got. It doesn't disrupt the story. It doesn't drive audiences away. It doesn't create a dissonance between the people and what they're seeing in the kind of development. It just fits. And that is important. Because it really does help give people ideas about how to do that properly. And that will hopefully lead to more trans representation that really does represent us. That really does give us the characters that we need to see more and more in the shows that people are watching. Especially in a time period right now where, honestly, we just need more trans characters out there in TV, in film, that are just able to be and it doesn't become a big problem, and it can just show that we're able to exist, and it doesn't affect you. It's not a big problem for the cis audience. It really does introduce the idea of trans people existing into the minds of people who watch it. So, hopefully, you liked what I had to say here, and maybe you agreed with it, and if you haven't watched Umbrella Academy, I would advise checking it out. It's a really good series. It's really fun. It's really entertaining. The acting is really good. The writing is a bit of a nightmare sometimes, but it's worth watching through regardless. And honestly, it's just really nice to see Elliot Page stepping into this in a way that he's bringing to all of his roles. In a way that it is 
helping to hopefully give a lot of trans people, especially trans men, a visible role model and a celebrity who does represent them. That's really important, and I'm hoping that that is a message that really speaks a lot of people. If you really like what I've done here, you can like, share, subscribe, and comment. Those are all really useful YouTube things, and they will hopefully get this sort of message out to more people. Other than that, if you really, really, really like what I've done here and you want to help support me continuing to do this YouTube channel, you can go to a link below and click on my Patreon, uh, and you can give me money, which is really, really useful because it pays for stuff that is used to keep me alive and making more videos rather than having to go and do other things that would take up the time that I normally reserved for making these. Other than that, thank you for this video and I hope you have a really good day.